May the peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to Trinity United Church here in Port Coquitlam. We're grateful that you're spending your morning with us. Trinity United Church in Port Coquitlam resides on the unceded... May the peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to Trinity United Church here in Port Coquitlam. We're grateful that you're spending your morning with us. Trinity United Church in Port Coquitlam resides on the unceded... May the peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to Trinity United Church here in Port Coquitlam. We're grateful that you're spending your morning with us. Trinity United Church in Port Coquitlam resides on the unceded... May the peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to Trinity United Church. Trinity United Church in Port Coquitlam resides on the unceded traditional territory of the Coast Salish people of the Coquitlam First Nations. Our acknowledgement of unceded traditional territory is a first step in reconciliation between settler cultures and indigenous peoples and the decolonization of Western systems that continue to oppress and exploit indigenous peoples and land. If you are joining us on YouTube, please check out our website at ucpogo.ca. We would also appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel and like and share our services. Those buttons are right below the video. I invite you to take a deep breath and let it go. And take another deep breath. And let it go. And one more time, take a deep breath. And let it go. And let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit dwells within us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. God the Spirit with us, glory. Alleluia. Be still and know that God is. Before creation began, the ground of our being was. And when all human striving has ceased, God will still be. From everlasting to everlasting, God is God worthy to be worshipped. Let us sing praise to our God, and we pray. In joy and in sorrow, in rest and in work, in peace and in anxiety, let us know your presence, O God. Through this time of worship, empower us to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together All Earth is Waiting, number five in Voices United. I invite you to make yourselves as comfortable as you can on the pew or the chair or the sofa, whatever you're sitting on. Maybe let your eyes close or just rest half-lidded as we sit quietly in God's reconciling love. Become aware of your breathing. You don't need to control it, just be aware of the air entering your lungs and then relaxing as you exhale. Let your body and mind be soft, open and receptive. Today, Isaiah will describe a garden planted by God. God tenderly nurtures the garden to make it sure it grows the best produce. For a moment, we can imagine 
being that garden. Imagine being tucked gently into freshly turned, cool soil, given sunlight and water, and our roots grow deep into the soil, and our branches grow up into the air. We can imagine being connected to earth and sky and God's love flowing through us in both directions. We will sit for 90 seconds, silently focusing on our breath and expressing gratitude in our thoughts for the gift of that breath. God gives us breath. God hears our prayers. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Our story today is called A Sad Song from Isaiah, and it has a repeated refrain that you can say with me when we get to it. Come, let me tell you a story of my beloved and his garden. He had a garden on a fertile hill. With love he dug it up, with hope he cleared it of stones, and with gentle expectations he planted the best flowers and vegetables he could find. With joy he built a gazebo where he could sit in the shade to watch over his garden. And in anticipation, he placed a great table in the midst of it where he could process the bountiful harvest. Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit. Praise God with our voices, with cymbal and lute. We are God's garden, we are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. He expected his garden to yield abundant, lush, and healthy flowers, fruits, and vegetables. But instead, it yielded only rot and ferment. For many, many years, he tilled the soil, moved about the plants, increased the fertilizer, adjusted the moisture, but still it yielded only rot and ferment. Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit, Praise God with our voices, with cymbal and lute. We are God's garden. We are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. And so the gardener says, you who are listening to me, you people here in the pews, you be the judge between me and my garden. What more is there for me to do that I have not already done? When I expected it to yield healthy fruit, why did it yield only rot and ferment? Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit. Praise God with our voices, with cymbals and lute. We are God's garden, we are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. 
And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll remove the hedge and let my garden go back to the earth. I'll break down the walls and let it be trampled by wild animals. It will go fallow and will no longer be pruned or hoed. It will grow over with weeds and thorns. I will even command that the clouds not rain on it. Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit. Praise God with our voices with cymbal and lute. We are God's garden, we are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. The garden of God is the people of God. You and you are God's pleasant planting. God expected justice but saw only inequity. God expected compassion but heard only greed. Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit. Praise God with our voices with cymbal and lute. We are God's garden, we are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. We are the garden of God. And we need to be honest with ourselves as we look at the world we've created. Are we worthy fruit that God is pleased to harvest, that bring justice, compassion, and beauty to the world? Or are our words and actions only producing iniquity, greed, and decay? Bring in the harvest, bring in the fruit. Praise God with our voices with cymbal and lute. We are God's garden, we are God's vine. Our words and our actions are God's kingdom's sign. And we're going to, uh, we're going to proceed with our psalm, number 80. And uh, David and I will sing the refrain twice and then we invite you to join in on the responses. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You who, you who lead, lead Joseph, Joseph like a flock. flock. You, you who are enthroned amidst the cherubim. cherubim. Shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir, Stir up your mind. might. Come, Come and save, save us. us. We you brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It sank deep roots and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It stretched out its branches, branches as far as the sea, and its roots as far as the river. Why then have you broken down its enclosure so that all who go by pluck its grapes? roots it up, and the beasts of the field devour it. Turn to us again, God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Bestow your care on this vine, on the spot which your right hand planted. As for those who set it on fire, who cut it down, may they perish at the frown of your face. Let your hand rest on the one by your side, on the one you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never forsake you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. The Gospel reading is from Luke 12, verses 49 to 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, 
five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank Thanks be God. to God. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together, My Soul Cries Out, number 120, in more voices. A joyful shout that the God of my heart is great and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait you fix your sight on your servants plight and my weakness you did not spurn so from east to west shall my name be blessed could the world be about to turn my heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn Tears for the drawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would cook you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to for the world is about to turn my heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn from the halls of power to the fortress tower not a stone will be left on stone let the king beware of your justice tears every tyrant from his throne the hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Let us pray. Holy One, as the psalmist sings, you bring us out of captivity and plant us like a vine. As we reflect on your word, clear the ground and let us sink down our roots that we might bear fruit worthy of your good news. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today's New Testament text from Luke is probably one of the most difficult texts in the Christian scriptures. Jesus says, 
I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Hasn't Luke just spent 12 chapters telling us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace? And that he's come to bring peace? Didn't Jesus send out his disciples and then the 70 telling them to say to each household, peace be with you? Looking forward, won't Jesus' first words to the disciples after he is resurrected and they're gathered in a locked room be, peace be with you? Didn't Jesus just put James and John in their place when they wanted to call down fire and destruction on the Samaritan village that refused to receive Jesus? Can you imagine James and John? Why does Jesus get to bring fire down and we don't? What's going on here? I'm horrified to think how these words today might sound to an indigenous person whose family may well have been torn apart by the church. That was not Jesus' intention. There are Christians who would use this passage to support their belief that we need to be preparing for judgment and the persecution to come. But that isn't Jesus either. As always, I believe that context is essential when we come to a text that confuses us or maybe even has us questioning, is this our Jesus saying this? As you know, one of my professors at seminary was very fond of saying, a text without a context is a pretext. We need to remember that we have been walking with Jesus from Galilee to Jerusalem. He's been teaching us what it means to follow him. Already he's taught us that when he gets to Jerusalem, he will be persecuted, tried, and killed, and on the third day he will rise. But no one seems to understand what is meant by that. We need to remember that peace doesn't mean ease. It is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. As we heard last week, however, there is still Good Friday between where we are and the resurrection. Jesus comes to destroy any status quo that prevents the poor the marginalized, the oppressed, and the vulnerable from also receiving treasures in heaven. Jesus comes to destroy any status quo that prevents the poor, the marginalized, the oppressed, and the vulnerable from also receiving treasures in heaven. Let's talk about the Roman household. In the first century, the Roman household was the building block of the Roman Empire. Much of Roman law was written to maintain the rights and privileges of the Roman family. At the head of the family was the oldest male. Below him, his sons, wife and daughters, perhaps grandmothers, servants and slaves. This was a family hierarchy that served men, occasionally women, to build and maintain privilege and power for the rich and affluent. For the most part, if you were a woman or a younger son, a servant or a slave, the status quo was oppressive and usually violently so. Jesus does not come to affirm or validate human institutions. Jesus comes to recommend and assert God's values and organizing principles.
you and I were largely raised on the North American myth of the nuclear family. I say myth of the nuclear family because aside from Leave it to Beaver and Father Knows Best, very few homes were exclusively nuclear. Even back in the 50s, families weren't just a father who brought home the bacon and a mother who raised the children and kept the house, two and a half kids, a dog, a cat, and a white picket fence. Even back in the 50s, more commonly, families were composed of single women raising children and grandchildren, often from different fathers. Family units often included unmarried aunts and uncles. If, if your family fit the mold of a nuclear family, it's because you weren't poor, or a person of color, or indigenous. Jesus doesn't come to create discord between the people we love. Jesus does come to destroy national myths that oppress and marginalize the vulnerable. I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. Do you think that I've come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. Maybe it makes a little difference if we think of the fire as something that cleanses or prepares rather than as something that merely destroys. A refiner's fire burns off the dross so that the pure metal can be formed into something precious. Indigenous people used controlled burns to keep the undergrowth in the forest minimal so that wildfires would have less kindling. Small burns are still dangerous and uncomfortable, but they fulfill a greater purpose. And what about the division Jesus has come to sow? Perhaps if we read the division as descriptive instead of prescriptive, Jesus is describing what will happen as people start following him. Division will happen because the people who benefit from the status quo will do anything to maintain it. While those of us who want to follow Jesus need to commit everything, in order to follow him fully. Last week, the right Reverend Carmen, Dr. Carmen Lansdowne, preached her installation as moderator of the United Church, and she evoked Aslan from The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Aslan was C.S. Lewis's not-so-subtle metaphor for Jesus. Carmen reminded us, Aslan isn't safe but he's good. He isn't tame, but we can trust him. Once again, peace must not be confused with ease. May we trust what is good, even if it doesn't feel safe, May we follow the way of peace, even if it isn't easy. May we know the time and receive the message. Amen. I'm going to invite our friend Art Pearson to come up and sing for us again this morning. Good morning. It's great to be here again. The song I have for you today is called I Have Returned. I have 
return to the God of my childhood, to the same simple faith as a child I once knew. Like the prodigal son, I long for my loved ones, for the comforts of home, and the God I outgrew. I have returned to the God of my childhood, Bethlehem's babe, the prophet's messiah. He's Jesus to me, eternal destiny. Praise his name. I have returned. I have returned to the God of my mother with unfailing faith for the child of her heart. She said, bring them up the way that you want them. Thank God when they're grown, they'll never depart. I have returned I learned at her knee, he's a lily of the valley, he's Jesus to me, eternal destiny, praise his name, I have returned, I have returned. God of my father, the most godlike man a child could know. I just heard a shout from the angels in glory, praising the Lord. A child has come home. I have returned to the God of my Father, Creator of heaven and earth, God of the universe. He's Jesus to me, eternal destiny. Praise His name. Returned. I have returned to the Yahweh of Judah. On my knees I did fall where the wall now stands. This lesson I've learned as I work my way homeward, the Savior of all, is a comfort to man. I have returned to the father of Abraham, the shepherd of Moses, who called him the great I am. He's Jesus to me, eternal deity. Praise his name. I have returned. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Art. Our minute for mission today is titled, Podcast Invites Children to Engage Deep Spiritual Questions. Are you a parent or grandparent with children home from, for summer vacation? Looking for healthy, screen-free, and imaginative ways to engage them and nurture their spirit at the same time? The Scribbler's Story, a new Christian children's podcast, just might be the answer. The podcast takes a creative approach to encourage children to explore their imagination and faith without using screens. Described as, quote, Narnia with kid actors and a soundtrack, unquote, the adventurous storyline released in 15-minute episodes every Monday through the summer takes children on a purposeful and fun journey to engage with deep, spiritual questions. Especially over the last few years, children have been spending more time on screens. Podcasts and audiobooks inspire the use of imagination and creativity in children and are more portable than TV shows and movies. Perfect for bedtime or car rides, says Amy Van Wensum, the show's executive producer. Not only are the podcasts convenient, portable, and allow listeners to relax or multitask while tuning in on their own time, they also give blossoming young actors like Paige, Isaac, and Jacob, you can see that that's them up there, an opportunity to grow their faith and skills in a professional, exciting environment. Supported by Vision Fund and Embracing the Spirit grants, The Scribbler's Story is one of a stellar lineup of exciting projects to receive funding. Both grant programs are designed to inspire innovation and are supported by generous gifts to mission and service. Best of all, The Scribbler's Story is a free resource for children and families and it's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeart, and Buzzsprout. Please share it wild, widely with your communities and networks. And as always, thank you for supporting innovative ministry projects through mission and service. We are grateful for the many ways people choose to serve and give at Trinity United Church. Our ministry is only possible thanks to your gifts of money, time, and service. If you would like to make a financial contribution, please send a check to the church office or click on the Donate Now button on our website or place an envelope in the plate at the front of the church. Let us pray. ground of all being, we present our offerings and praise of money, time, and skill, that they may be used to extend your liberating presence. With them we offer our varied ministries, that each of us may be part of your answer to the cries of the world. Amen. Please stand as you are able and sing with us our communion hymn, Jesus Christ is Waiting.
should triumph too. On suspicion's graveyard, let's be dance with you. Jesus Christ is calling, calling in the streets. Who will be my journey? I will guide their feet. Please be seated. Now is the time to have your communion elements ready. If you don't have one, wave your hand and someone will bring them to you. And let us pray. Christ is with us in all things. Christ is with us in all places, in all events, in all the longings of our hearts, in all the hurts and the joys, in the singing, in the tears, Christ is with us. Christ is in the raindrop and the storm, the child's laugh and an old woman's sigh. Christ is in the conflict between nations and in the embrace of a welcoming community. Christ is in the most distant stars and in the air we breathe. Christ initiates us, Christ nourishes us, Christ sustains us, Christ transforms us. Christ is with us. Christ is our beginning. Christ shares our journey. Christ is our end. Christ is our Alpha and Omega and everything in between. If we flee to the ends of the earth, Christ is there. If we bury ourselves deep in the soil, Christ is there. If we fly to distant galaxies and star clusters, Christ is even there. If we shroud ourselves in darkness and clutch shut our eyes, Christ's light is there. Christ is with us. In all things, Christ is with us. In all places, in all events, in all the longings of our hearts, in all the hurts and all the joys, in the singing, in the tears. Christ is with us. And so with all of creation we sing, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Christ is in the bread of life. Christ is with us. Christ is in the cup of promise. Christ is with us. Confident in Christ's everlasting presence, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Make us mindful, O God, of holy preparation of your presence in these gifts of grape and bread. And upon us and what we do here, may we be prophets of hope, peace, joy, and love in the world through our actions and gift giving. Praise be to the source, praise be to the spirit, praise be to the living Christ, three in one. Amen. And now we turn to you as a child turns to her mother, seeking affirmation and comfort, praying a paraphrase of the words that your son taught us. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory, the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. 
the bread of new life. The grape of promise. And we continue in prayer. Loving and compassionate God, we give you thanks for the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, in this feast, which we have just shared. Through his presence, may we be more compassionate, love one another more deeply, and follow him more closely. May our lives be those of service to you. Send us to do your will in the church and in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together I See a New Heaven, number 117, in Voices United. standing and I invite the folks at home to turn on their cameras and go to gallery view if you're able to go to gallery view and we'll help you turn on your cameras so that we can see you and I invite you to reach out with your hands and a sign of blessing 
May the God beyond us, the Christ beside us, the Spirit within us, the three all around us be with you now and always. Amen.